Solomon who risked his career, but he took sides and was on the side of the poor and the downtrodden. He adopted a school here in Soshanguve and supported that school fully. He sang in rallies when others wanted to be paid. Solomon who played free of charge in many rallies, but when funds were available, sometimes he was ignored. Solomon loved our country. Solomon loved South Africa. When South Africa lost the opportunity to host the World Cup, when all of us were down and out, it took Solomon to comfort the nation by rendering the song DMC Walingangeli. Solomon was not on the fence on political matters. He said, and I quote, when President Tabombeki was elected as president, Arrapidi said President Tabombeki. It's all time. He collapsed on stage. He collapsed during a tour. Umena Makela my wow stage. Two weeks before Umena Makela show, what was happening? My son, Selapano do granny granny mother. I'm supposed to be uh, looking after my grandchildren in Tony Sarah and traveling from Asian culture. Well, I'm my son, I'm still, after 30 years in exile, I'm still expected to go and perform. While I'm with what collapsed the child in the street and she died. This, this country. <coughs> so the Mulu Shole Kadid, not in the shipping or the travel, was promoting a new album. Then, in a country of 30 years of democracy, the country should only look to Mundo Sas Bekele and to the operation. This country, every year from 1994, how much? Who minister of of ministers, the finance every year, all the years, eight years, will have any budget, it might come out millions, as well as millions, will cost millions, will cost millions, billions, as it is, billions, whether you could not say the life of Solomon. So Solomon died a broken man. Two months ago, I was at a school stage, remember? John Oscar, when I die, they will do a provincial funeral called by Jerome of Adishio. Voga Taki, Walala Osa. The moment of truth has come, Sarah Panthi. Now is the time. The time is now. Now is the time to break mental chains. Now is the time for soul searching. Now is the time to reclaim dignity and power. Poverty is calm in South Africa. It, the economy is still in white hands. Minerals are still in white hands. Silence is no longer golden.
silence could mean cowardice. The, the most important weapon of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressor. Now is the time to change the narrative. Now is the time to think deep. Fulga Taki, Walala Wasala. Fulga Taki, Walala Wasala. The most important weapon of the oppressor. Destiny is not determined by foreign designs and concepts. A destiny is determined by the choices we make. People are colonized. People are westernized. People are brainwashed. Fulga Taki, Walala Wasala. Charity begins at the home. The charity begins at the home. Now is the time for Patoki Lafo. Support township economy. Ekasi, support rural economy. A buy black, a buy brilliant, a buy wisely. Walala Wasala. May the soul of Soli Mohulu rest in peace. And it's important that we share the message so that we, we un you understand the journey that we took and the mental strain that the family took. Hence, there were no communication about this. <clears throat> the first encounter was with the doctors of Botswana, which told us that uh, Papa was Papa came to the hospital on on Sunday. He seemed to be, according to their words, and I quote, <clears throat> in a state of drunkenness, and we were all shocked together with the management team. Um, the same doctor examined him the next day, and then he still concluded with the same comments that your father looks a bit drunk, and it's two days in hospital. We asked the doctor, how is it pos possible that a man in your care seems a little bit drunk? What diagnosis have you given to date? And unfortunately, there hasn't been a diagnosis in Botswana. We therefore took a quick decision while in Botswana to say that, look, this is a critical situation. We need to take Baba back to South Africa. While going to his ward, we found Papa sitting in a ward um, alongside the two members of his, of his management team. And the first words that he said when he saw her daughter coming in was that, don't cry, my daughter. Why are you crying? It was because of, it was the first time that we see him in that state. We've never seen him in that state. Following that, um, we therefore organized with the South African hospitals to arrange a bed so that we can immediately transfer Papa from Botswana to South Africa. Um, it's unfortunate to say that there were no examinations or MRI scans or any sort of medical intervention that the, that the hospital did that side. Hence, we, we took him to the nearest, pub, nearest private hospital that we, that we can find, which was in Rustenberg. Immediately when we got to Rustenberg, um, the, phys the physicians and the medical team, they quickly uh, looked at Papa and then diagnosed him that he had a, he had a stroke. And with that said, um, they quickly had to do a brain operation um, on, that, on that day. We, we managed to do the brain operation at the, at the private institution. After doing the brain operation, Papa was obviously admitted into ICU uh, for a period of time. Unfortunately, the first operation was not successful, and we needed now to do another operation. <clears throat> That's when we pleaded to the public at large, pleaded to the communities, pleaded to South Africans to say that Yes, we have undergone the first operation. The public can you assist us with funds. 
And unfortunately, the funds that were required and that were donated, it was not even a quarter of what was required for the operation. And we had to take an emotional decision also again as a family to say that we need to move Papa to a public institution so that we can um, continue with the second operation. We then moved Papa to a public uh, institution in Gauteng, an academic institution, whereby they performed a second operation on him. On that second operation, um, it was hopeful and very positive on the second time in terms of the doctor's report that we received. It's important also to note that and say that during this time, while in ICU, all the medical staff, Papa paid for them. He was singing with the medical staff while he was in ICU, singing for them and also praying for them. While in ICU, he said that to us that, Banag, I've heard everything you've said while I was in an induced coma. Thank you for the efforts that you've done. He was getting better while in a public institution and he was moved to a normal ward. We asked the question as a family to say that, for us, he still looks critical. Why are you moving him out of ICU? <clears throat> they said they needed space um, in ICU. They took him to a ward, and I feel that as a family, for us to correct, or for us as South Africans to self-correct, we need to reflect and tell it like it is. We, while going into the wards, I can put it under oath here now that there is no cleaner in that ward. It was a shocking state of state that we've ever seen in our life. That is it really a medical facility that we're seeing here? Has there been cleaners in this facility? And my answer and conclusion to that was no. And I feel, not feel, but it's important for me to say these things because of we need to save the next life. If you don't say it, people will never correct that behavior. And unfortunately, this is the only platform that I have or that we have as a family, rather. While in that same, same word, uh, Papa picked up a bacteria. In fact, I need to go back to the Sunday before, the, the Sunday when we got called, in that the doctor's calling us at 1 a.m. in the night saying that they need to do another operation on Papa. And we quickly ask, what operation are you doing now? They said, no, there's something in the stomach. I'm saying, but what is something in the stomach? No answer given. Immediately the next day, Monday morning, we quickly go to the public institution as we're doing on a daily basis. And we found that, no, the operation is not necessary anymore. Um, he's got a bug infection that he picked up in the hospital. And he needs to be put in isolation. We asked the doctors, how is it possible that we get this back? They're telling us that the only way he could have picked up the back is in hospital because of the hygiene conditions. We saw Papa deteriorating from a good heart rate, you know, fighting. We were speaking to him on a daily basis that, Papa, please fight and he couldn't move. The only movement he did was his head and nodding and telling us, yes, I'm fighting. But unfortunately, he was moved back into ICU after they could not treat the infection that he picked up in hospital. While in ICU, he made sure that he waits for his daughter, my wife's birthday, and also the younger sister's birthday. He passed on the day after the younger sister's birthday. And it was a sad situation for the family. 
So, in so saying, um, South Africans and family, and we were very much hurt as a family when we asked for donations of an icon and the public did not respond. And we need to put it out there. And I would like to also acknowledge JJ for the contribution, Professor JJ for the contribution he did on his show. We, we tend to celebrate people and fill up balls and demand to be in programs while people are dead. But when they are alive, we don't celebrate those people. We don't embrace those legends that we should be embracing. A community saves lives. I'm not saying that we should do it for Papa. I'm saying that we as a community, we should all look out for each other. They, when there's help needed next door or in front opposite to you, let's all stand up and give that help that's required. Uh, you will hear many speakers come today and telling you how Papa lives this life. He will always share his last cent with somebody that needs it. And he would not even have money himself. If he, wants to, if he went to a shop to go buy something and somebody asked him for money, he will give him that last money and not even come back with the bread that he promised that they will come with. That's the type of person that he was. Yes, indeed, we did require 700,000 of, of surgery. And like I said, we only managed to raise 100,000 out of South Africa. It's a sad situation for the family. Uh, we've been through a traumatic time. That's why we have not spoken about this on any publication or to anybody. But I would like to also acknowledge the, the leadership of Aisa when they, when they had the call that Papa is no more. They were the first actually to jump and say, look, as the music union industry, what, where can we do and where can we help? Today is a state funeral. Um, with that being said, the, the approval only came yesterday, midday. All the resources that you are seeing here were done by the family. At the back of their minds, they still have debts of the private institution that they were at. At the back of their minds, we still have debts of the government institution, the academic institution that was helping Papa to have the second operation. We didn't even know that we pay at government institutions. Mama Nomvul, we were given a bill of 93,000 at a government institution. 93,000. I've never heard of that before. No one actually told us that we we're going to pay. If we had to pay 93,000, we would have kept Papa for that duration in a private institution. And we would not have picked up that infection. He would have been kept in the ICU where he would have been monitored on a 24-hour basis. South Africans, that's how we lost Papa. Um, there are many articles out there. That is not the truth. Some have even buried him last week. Some have even buried him last month. But he fought a good seven weeks while in hospital, in a hospital bed. And I'm extremely proud of that man. Every time I walked into that IC unit, I told him the same way, Papa, I'm proud of you. I don't think there's any man that can stand this pain. But he did it for a full seven weeks. South Africans, that's all that we, that, that we want to say. We acknowledge the dignitaries that are also in the house that also came. Premier Panyazale Sufi came with Ndatem Zwakimbuli. We acknowledge you for, for, for your presence. The current city mayor who was also there, the current city mayor of Tswani, we also acknowledge you for, for, for helping us out when we are in, in need. The NEC um, we also acknowledge you, also acknowledge you 
for also making time for us. To Mamu Konyani, we have received the flowers and we also acknowledge you. Uh, to the Limpopo music, uh, Limpopo arts movement also, the Demposa, uh, we recognize you and we thank you for your participation also. To the artists also that, you know, when they heard about our cries, raising funds, trying to raise funds, that was a thoughtful gesture. Although we stopped you at the last hour, we, we saw the condition of BAP. Hence, we did not want to continue with the fundraising. But we are very much thankful for your efforts and time. To Sony Music also, we would like to say thank you to Sony Music for also agreeing to launch Papa's CD today, which is Obanus of Pepe Zangami, while I'm gone. And I also like to ask the communities out there to stream it in memory of Papa. Anything you want to say? I think that's all I have to say in terms of uh, debriefing the South Africans and media and the dignitaries at large about what, what transpired during that um, sickness period, if I can call it. But yes, thank you.